I can use a mass spectrum to find the relative atomic mass for an element because I have all the information that I need. If we look at this example for rubidium, we can see that there are two peaks. So that tells me that I have got two isotopes of rubidium, uh, rubidium 85 and rubidium 87. Remember that this bottom axis, the x-axis, essentially gives us the mass of each isotope because we are assuming that the charge, Z is the charge, is always plus one. Um, in this case, the spectrum will have been gained by the element being bombarded by high energy electrons and one electron has been knocked out to create our positive ions. The thing that worries most people is that we have no units on the x-axis, but because this is relative abundance, I can measure the peaks any way I like. So if I take a ruler and measure these two peaks, we find that rubidium 85, the height of the peak is 5.82 centimetres, and the height of the rubidium 87 peak is 2.25 centimetres. So I can use this information to calculate the percentage abundance of each isotope. So percentage let's start with rubidium 85 and it's essentially the amount of rubidium 85 I have and in this case 5.82 divided by the total 5.82 plus 2.25 uh, multiply by 100 because we want this as a percentage and it comes out at 72.1%. I can do the same for rubidium 87. In this case, it is going to be 2.25 divided by 5.82 plus 2.25. So the, percent, uh, the relative amount divided by the total times 100, and that comes out at 27. 0.9%. So now I have the percentage abundance, I have the mass of each isotope, so I can find the relative atomic mass in exactly the same way as we did at GCSE. So what we need to do is in each case we multiply the mass by the percentage abundance for each isotope and we add them together. So that would be 87 times 27.9. As a working percentages, we're going to divide the total by 100. And that comes out at 85.6. So that is telling me that the relative atomic mass for rubidium is 85.6. Very, very straightforward. So let's run through that very quickly. All we have done is we have used the height of each peak to work out the percentage abundance. We've done that for each isotope individually, and then we've plugged it into the expression we used at GCSE, which is just the mass times percentage abundance for each isotope added together divided by 100.